A 12-year-old boy hoping to impress the girl of his aspirations, searching for one thing that can catch her eye. For that, he needs to learn the tale of the Lorix, a charismatic creature. Our narrative commences in the enclosed city of Needville, where everything is fabricated, everything is manufactured and artificial, even the trees, which don't generate oxygen. Oxygen is distributed to each residence by a corporation named O'Hare Air, which is owned by the town's mayor, Mr. O'Hare. Among the town's inhabitants is Ted Wiggins, a boy full of inquisitiveness and optimism who harbors a deep admiration for a girl named Audrey. Audrey is unique compared to the other children in Needville. She dreams of witnessing a real tree. Not the fake ones that embellish their flawlessly maintained lawns. Ted's yearning to win Audrey over compels him to take a daring step. He asks his wise and affectionate grandmother where he could locate an authentic tree. His grandmother, who seems to know everything, tells him about the once lure, a mysterious figure residing beyond Needville's walls in a barren and lifeless wasteland. Ted, filled with resolve, sets out on his scooter, venturing beyond the city's boundaries for the first time. The journey is arduous. The once beautiful terrain is now a desolate wasteland cloaked in smog and void of life. After what feels like an eternity, Ted finds himself at the doorstep of the once lure's old, decrepit house, concealed in the middle of the wasteland. The once lure, an elderly man living in seclusion, is initially hesitant to converse with Ted, but after some persistence, he agrees to recount the tale of how the world came to be this way, a story laced with remorse, greed, and the loss of something invaluable. The once Lur's story takes us back to his youth when he was an aspiring inventor seeking his fortune. He roamed the globe searching for the ideal material for his product but found no success until one day he stumbled upon a lush, Vibrant forest brimming with colorful truffula trees. Playful bar bar lutes, and lively swimmy swans. The forest was a paradise teeming with life and splendor. The truffula trees were unlike anything the once Lur had ever seen, with their soft, colorful tufts that swayed gently in the breeze. It was a realm of wonder, untouched by the greed of man. Driven by his ambition to create a product everyone would desire, the once Lur chopped down his first truffula tree to make a need, a highly versatile garment that he was certain would be a hit. This act summoned the Lorix, a small, orange creature with a moustache who spoke on behalf of the trees and all the creatures of the forest. The Lorix was the forest's guardian, and he was displeased with the once Lur's actions. The Lorix warned the once Lur about the repercussions of his greed, but the once Lur, blinded by the potential for success, dismissed the Lorix's concerns. Ted listens intently to the story. But the old man refuses to continue, saying that if Ted wants to hear more, he must return the following day. Upon returning home, Ted starts daydreaming about Audrey's birthday. In his fantasy, He's there too, presenting her with a living tree. Just as they are about to kiss, his mom snaps him back to reality. Ted knows he needs to see the once lure again. But he's stuck spending the weekend with his family. Luckily, his mom gets bored and retreats to her room, giving Ted the chance to sneak out. But as he tries to leave, he is stopped by O'Hare at the exit gate. The greedy mayor doesn't want anyone discovering how to grow trees, as it would jeopardize his business of selling bottled oxygen. He cautions Ted not to meddle, reminding him that he's watching every resident closely. Despite the warning, Ted is too determined to give up. After O'Hare leaves, Ted manages to slip out of town once more. The once Lur is surprised to see him again and continues the story. As night falls, 
the once lur finishes his first product and goes to sleep. While he sleeps, the lorix and the animals carefully take his bed and gently place it in the flowing river. However, they soon realize that a small barbar -bar loot is on the bed too. So they rush to save him. After much effort, they manage to rescue both the once lure and the barbar -bar loot. Grateful for the act of kindness, the once lure vows never to cut down another tree again. The next morning, he awakens to find himself surrounded by all the animals, who are now wreaking havoc on his belongings. The once lure shows his product to the lorix, but the lorix mocks it, predicting it will be a total flop. In response, the once lure demonstrates that his product can be transformed into various items such as swimsuits, rugs, hats, and more. The once lure then goes to town to sell his product, but nobody likes it, and people even ridicule him. Dejected, he discards the need, which accidentally lands on a young woman's head, making her appear quite stylish. Disheartened, the once lure returns to the forest and decides to live among the forest animals. Suddenly, a crowd of people marches his way, requesting the need and offering to purchase it. It appears that he's about to become wealthy. The once lure leaves the story at a cliffhanger. The next day, after visiting the market, Ted attempts to leave town again, but O'Hare has sealed the exit. Ted looks around and discovers a tall building. He uses it to leap beyond the town's borders. Upon reaching the once lure, Ted presents him with a bag of marshmallows and listens to the rest of the story. As the need's popularity grows, the once lure's business expands. His avaricious family arrives to assist. The lorix isn't pleased with his family's arrival, but the once lure assures him that the trees will remain safe. Despite this assurance, harvesting begins, with his mother urging him to increase production. Despite his initial promise to the lorix, the once lure begins clear-cutting the forest to meet the rising demand for needs. As the trees are being felled, the lorix protests vigorously. He highlights the damage being done to the environment and its inhabitants. The once lure, blinded by greed, refuses to heed his warnings. He rationalizes his destructive behavior, convincing himself that his actions are justified in the name of progress and profit. The valley's landscape changes drastically, with factories and machines replacing the natural beauty. As the once lure's business grows, the valley suffers. The air becomes polluted, the water is tainted, and the animals become weak and hungry as their food supply dwindles. The humming fish have to leave the polluted waters. Finally, the day arrives when the last truffle a tree is chopped down. Without the trees, the once lure's factory ceases operations, and his family abandons him. The valley, once lush and vibrant, is now a wasteland. As everything crumbles, all the animals depart. With no more trees to protect, the lorix lifts himself into the sky. The once lure is left alone, burdened with guilt, and surrounded by the desolate landscape he created. The lorix leaves behind a small pile of stones with the word, unless, engraved on them. The once lur is left to ponder the significance of this message as he lives out his days in isolation. Back in the present, the once lur gives Ted the last truffle a seed, entrusting him with the responsibility of planting it and bringing the trees back to Needville. Ted realizes that the environment's future hinges on the choices he and others make. Ted sneaks the seed back into Needville but the seed is captured on camera. Ted devises a plan with Audrey and his family to plant the seed in the town center. Ted's mother leaves to distract O'Hare's henchmen while Ted, Audrey, and his grandmother head out to plant the seed. Energized by their mission, 
they encounter numerous challenges in their attempt to plant the seed. Mayor O'Hare, recognizing the threat that real trees pose to his bottled air business, mobilizes his forces to stop them at all costs. This leads to a series of chase scenes through Needville, with the trio narrowly escaping O'Hare's henchmen. They eventually reach the town center. O'Hare uses his influence to persuade the townspeople that trees are dangerous and unnecessary, spreading falsehoods to maintain his control over the city. In a pivotal moment, Ted gets the chance to address the people of Needville. He explains the importance of trees, the history of their town, and the necessity of restoring nature to their artificial world. Initially doubtful, the townspeople are gradually won over by Ted's passion and sincerity. The citizens of Needville ultimately turn against O'Hare, rejecting his fearmongering about trees and embracing the idea of a greener future. Together, they help Ted dismantle a section of the town wall, allowing him to plant the seed in a small patch of earth, the first real soil seen in Needville in years. In the distance, the tower looms as the years pass by. Needville flourishes, and the truffle a forest.